This is section 12.4, adding and subtracting polynomials. We're going to start out with addition. To add in algebra means to collect like terms. Terms are alike whenever the variables are identical. So here are some examples of like terms, 5a and 3a. They're different coefficients, but they have the same variable. Negative 6a squared and 3a squared are also like terms because they have the same variable with the same exponent. Some examples of some terms that are not alike are 5a and 3b. The variables are different. Negative 6a squared and 3a are also not like terms. Even though they both have a's for their variables, the negative 6a squared has a square on the variable and 3a does not. So they have to be the same variable with the same exponent in order for them to be like terms. So in order to add polynomials, we just collect like terms and write in descending order. So if you'll remember, when we write a polynomial in descending order, it means we're going from biggest to smallest according to the exponents. Okay, so let's look at A. The first thing we wanna do is combine like terms. So let's see what terms are alike. This is a, uh, has just an X and this and this, but we wanna write our polynomial in descending order. So if we start with the biggest exponent, this term has the biggest exponent, but it doesn't have a like term. So I'm just gonna bring it down for x squared. All right, we're done with that. And then we look at our x's. Let's combine all of our x's. Negative three x and negative x would give us a negative four x. Negative four x plus two x would be a negative two x. So we're done with all the x's and all that's left is a negative one. It doesn't have a like term, so we just bring it down and that gives us our polynomial in descending order. All right, so for B, we have um, two terms that have variables and it's the same variables, but they're in different orders. This is a 5AB and this is a negative 3BA. But if you'll remember, in Math 98, we learn about the different properties of real numbers. And for multiplication, multiplication has the commutative property, which says that we can multiply in any order, and it's the same thing. So that means since in each of these monomials, all of the terms are being multiplied, if I were to rewrite this as negative 3ab, it would be the same thing as negative 3ba because they're just being multiplied. So let's use this um, order so that it looks the same as our 5ab. So if I combine 5ab and negative 3ab, I get a positive 2ab. And I'm done with those terms. So the things that are left are constants, and that makes them like terms, and I can combine those. A negative 2 and a negative 9 give me negative 11. And that gives me my polynomial in descending order. All right, before we can combine like terms, we have to use the distributive property to get rid of any parentheses that we see. Okay, so in C, um, well, when we use the distributive property, we distribute anything that's touching the parentheses to everything outside, of, uh, everything inside of the parentheses. So if I look in front of this set of parentheses, there's nothing in front of it, so I don't need to distribute anything. So I can just drop the parentheses and bring down the stuff that's in the parentheses. And then for my second set of parentheses, I have a plus sign in front. Now, if I distribute the plus sign, a positive times a positive stays positive. A positive times a negative stays negative. So really, if there's a plus sign in front, you're just dropping the parentheses because it doesn't change anything inside the parentheses. Okay, so you have to get rid of the parentheses first before you can combine like terms. Now that my parentheses are gone, I'm gonna go through and combine like terms. So if I start out with my biggest exponent, 
this 4x to the third. There's no other term with an x to the third. So I'm just going to bring this down. Okay, I'm done with it. Now let's look for x squared. Okay, here's an x squared and here's an x squared. Negative 6x squared and a positive 5x squared gives me a negative 1, but I don't write the 1, x squared. All right, I'm done with that. Now let's look for x's. Okay, I have a positive 2x and a negative 2x. Well, when I combine those, they just cancel each other out. A positive 2 and a negative 2 is 0, so that's 0 x's. We don't write the x at all because 0 times x is 0. The only thing that's left is this negative 1, and I bring it down, and I'm done. And that's my polynomial. Okay, so let's look at D. Again, there's nothing in front of the parentheses, so I just drop the parentheses. And then for the second set of parentheses, there's a plus sign in front. So that doesn't change anything inside the parentheses. A positive times a negative is negative 2x squared. Positive times positive is positive x. Positive times positive is positive 3. Okay, the biggest exponent are these x squareds. So what happens if I combine negative 2x squared and negative 2x squared? Do they cancel each other out? No. They would only cancel each other out if they had opposite signs. A negative 2 and a negative 2 is a negative 4x squared. Okay, then I have plus 5x plus x. That would give me plus 6x. Negative 1 plus 3, that would be plus 2. Okay, and then... In this next uh, example, in front of this first set of parentheses, I have something, and that needs to be distributed. So I need to distribute the 2, and when we distribute, we distribute using multiplication. Okay, so if I multiply 2 times both terms inside the parentheses, I get 2x minus 6. And then for my second set, my second set of parentheses, there's a plus sign in front. So again, nothing changes. I just drop the parentheses. Okay, so if I combine like terms, 2x plus 3x is 5x. A negative 6 and a positive 6, that's 0. That just cancels out. So I'm done with everything, and my answer is just 5x. Okay, so when I subtract, um, I'm actually adding the opposite or the additive inverse. So let's, let's uh, talk about the additive inverses. Um, this is something that you would have learned in 98, um, but we're just going to kind of review that. The additive inverse is just the opposite sign of a number. So the additive inverse of negative 3 would be 3. The additive inverse of x plus 3, we would change every sign. So that would be negative x minus 3. The additive inverse of negative 4y plus 1 would be positive 4y minus 1. So when, just like, like I said, we learned this in 98, <laughs> When you subtract, you really write the expression as addition. So just like if we were to have 5 minus negative 3, we would change that to 5 plus 3. So really we are distributing that negative. Negative times negative gives us a positive. So it's the same thing whenever we're subtracting polynomials. If we're subtracting, we're going to add the opposite of the polynomial or just change every sign in the parentheses after that negative sign. And, or you could think of, of it as distributing the negative. Okay, so in A, example A, um, we have 5x plus 3y in a set of parentheses and there's nothing in front. So remember, if there's nothing in front, 
we just drop the parentheses. And then this time, in front of the second set of parentheses, we have a negative. So we're going to add the opposite. It would be plus, and then we're just going to change every sign um, in the parentheses after it. Okay, so it's an, let me take away that plus sign. Okay, so we're just changing every sign. If you think of this as a negative 1, negative 1 times positive 2x would be a negative 2x. Negative 1 times negative 3y would be a positive 3y. So all of the signs changed. Now we're going to combine like terms. So here we have, you know, we would go in descending order if we have the same variable. Here we have different variables, and usually what we do when we have different variables is we go in alphabetical order. So I would do the x's first, x, y, z. 5x minus 2x would be 3x. And then 3y plus 3y would be 6y. And then that's all we could do because they're not like terms. We can't combine those. All right, in B, we need to distribute 5 to this first set of parentheses. So that gives me 5x plus 20. And then to the second set of parentheses, again, we're going to distribute that negative or negative 1. Negative times positive is negative x. Negative times negative, that's plus 6. Okay, so we're going to start with the x's. 5x minus x. That would give me 4x. 20 plus 6 would be 26. All right, for C, there's nothing in front of the first set of parentheses, so we just drop the parentheses. And then for the second set of parentheses, we distribute the negative. Negative times negative, that would be a positive x squared negative times positive would be negative 2x to the third okay so we start with the biggest exponent and when we combine 7x cubed minus 2x cubed that's 5x cubed there's only one term with an x squared so we just bring it down we only have one term with just an x, bring it down, and bring down our constant, and we're done. Okay, here in D, we have uh, three sets of parentheses. So just look in front of each set of parentheses. This first group has nothing in front, so we just bring it down, drop the parentheses. The second group has a plus in front. So remember, plus doesn't change anything, so we just drop the parentheses again. And then the last group has a negative 2 in front. Make sure um, if, if it's negative, you carry that with it when you distribute. Negative 2 times y squared would be a negative 2y squared. And negative 2 times 5 would be negative 10. Okay, so again, let's combine like terms. Both of these have y squared. Negative 7y squared and negative 2y squared is negative 9 y squared. Um, I just have a single term with a y, so that's plus 3y. And then three constants. Negative 4 plus 6, that would be 2. And 2 minus 10 would be negative 8. And we're done with that one. Okay, what do you think we need to distribute um, first in this group. Well, if you'll notice, we have brackets. Brackets mean the same thing as parentheses, but the reason why we sometimes use brackets is to just kind of break it up visually. So we can see that this goes together and then this goes together. So it just helps us to kind of see that. Okay, um, so when we have more than one set of parentheses, we start with the innermost set of parentheses. Okay, so the innermost set of parentheses would be this right here. 
So we want to get rid of that one first. And the way to do that is to distribute what's touching it. We're going to distribute the 6 into the parentheses. Everything else I'm going to keep the same. Okay, so that would be plus 12x minus 18. And then I have that plus 9. Okay, so next I want to get rid of these brackets. Now, I can do it one of two ways. I can distribute what's touching the brackets to all four of these terms, or I could go ahead and simplify what's inside of the brackets and then distribute. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to go ahead and combine the stuff that I can combine inside the brackets. Okay, so inside the brackets, I have these two terms that have x's. Negative 3x and a positive 12x would be a positive 9x. All right. And a negative 18 and a positive 9 would be a negative 9. Okay, so now I need to get rid of those brackets. What do I distribute to get rid of the brackets? Not the 17. I distribute this negative. So again, that's like a negative 1. So I would distribute the negative to both of these terms, and that gives me negative times 9x would be a negative 9x. Negative times negative would be a positive 9. And then combine these two like terms. I'm going to bring down the x first because, again, we want it in standard form or descending order. And then 17 plus 9, that would be 26. And then we're done. And that's how we add and subtract polynomials.